I came to Clemson because I wanted to be at Clemson. My why as a baseball player is to help give back and help honor those who have helped me get there. I just want to inspire the younger generation. Nowadays with uh, transfer portal and, and NIL, some players can get distracted from where's the best opportunity. Where do I want to go aside from all that? Aside from all the other distractions. And for me, that was Clemson. Aaron, are you going? Yeah, no. Or some city rednecks around here. <laughs> Not true country. But we have fun with it. We have fun with it. We ready? Here we go. Let's roll. We uh, maybe uh, a little little country, but I'm not sure redneck. We right yeah, I would I would agree. We try to be as much redneck as we can. Actually, we have a saying uh, from Dernit Boy Outdoors. We have a saying: Let some red out. I don't know how much red we're letting out. We don't have a lot of free time as a family to get together. This is our happy place. This is this is where we come to to just kind of uh, relax and um, you know enjoy some nature. All right, Let's have some fun, baby. Yeah, I mean, for me. Um, I have a younger brother, two older sisters. Um, growing up in a very tough, competitive family, uh, for sure. I just need one bullet. I don't need much. I don't need multiple. Paul's gonna need multiple. You better get schooled, boy. Uh, it's kind of how our family rolls. Compete about everything, whether it's a game we're playing at the dinner table, or um, whether it's sports or school or church activity. Yay! And that's that's just kind of how, how our family is has grown up. Always outside. Always in the mud. Always throwing. Shooting. Oh. Ah, you stink. Over two. <laughs> that average is going down. <laughs> my oldest sister, Erin, my family will tell you that she is the best athlete in the family. From a young age, you know, she was two years older than me. She was always bigger and stronger and faster than me. So uh, she would somehow always beat me. And then, and then my younger brother, um, we were always the same exact size growing up. We're, we're 17 months apart. You know what? They have always taken up for each other. They've always loved supporting each other. Now they've had their share of fights. <laughs> we had, I think one of the greatest slash worst things we ever did was we had a wrestling mat upstairs in our house. And I think World War III cracked out a couple of times up there when one had the other one pinned in some awkward position. Oh. And my favorite part is just having fun. Uh, that's the story of our life. Show big bro what's up. You know, if Paul's in Charleston playing baseball and, and Will's in Clemson, they're always looking out for each other. You know, it's super special. When he was in college and I was in high school, I'd go to every single one of his games. And now that I'm in college, I'm on the other side again. And the one, the one team I want to play would be Clemson, just to, just to get that opportunity to play against, against Will one more time and, and show him up. That'd be fun. Because <laughs> he winning. Come on, Rob. Wait. We've lived here for, this year was 20 years. We've been here all Paul's life. And pretty much all of Will is he's baby. Good times, good memories. MMA. MMA. All every day, every, all day, every day. Paul was my partner, and it was just a disaster. <laughs> a disaster. This is our this is our man cave. This is uh. So Paul and I actually still share a room. I got most of the big deer on the wall, and and Paul's got you know no, some of these on. spikes up here. But I still um, got the biggest. Um, this is my this is my dad. He actually won. State championship in uh, 86, 1986. So I had to had to do something about it, and I had to you know, two up them. Will's been my role model growing up, and I look up to you and just 
very uh, inspirational, and I uh, want to follow in your footsteps. Yeah. Looking back, it it, it gave me uh, a perspective on, on what it's like to to grow up with with close siblings and and have fun with each other, love on each other, and um, just really lucky and fortunate to have them in my life and just trying to make our parents proud. I mean, Team Taylor started day one in 1998, and uh, I mean, since then, this is just everyone in this family supports the other. Yeah, my parents, uh, they, they mean the world to me. My mom and dad raised me tough. Man, they raised me tough. It's funny looking back, just some of the, the moments, you know, growing up, I was like, man, why are they so tough on me? But now I get it, now I get it. When we had kids, I told Avril, I said, I'm just gonna warn you, I plan to raise our children to be very tough because this is a tough world. If one is tough, two is tougher. And if two is tougher, then tough doesn't seem so tough. You got it. That's it. You were paying attention. Raising me tough as, as a little kid, everything's kind of coming together as I get older and just super thankful for them. You know, always giving me the best coaches, the best resources, you know, just putting the time, effort, and money into um, trying to shape me into the best man, best athlete I could possibly be. Uh, this is where it all started for, for, for me, my brother, and my sister. I get to come here every day. This is at my office, and this is the family gym, and um, pretty special. This is, uh, we started probably when we were, you know, eight, nine, ten years old, uh, and we used to, my brother and I used to always be sitting down, and my dad used to be working out. We would have a game on TV, and he would always say, hey, you just gonna watch or you gonna, you gonna work out? And uh, we, we kind of started slowly buying into the whole process, and it um, worked out for us pretty well. You know, our kids have bought into uh, putting in the work and the effort, and it's been a joy as a parent just to watch that. Both you boys were involved with wrestling, and we, we've been wrestling for, ten, we wrestled for 10 years. There was, a, there was a match where you should have lost 10 different ways. The kid was bigger, older, more experienced. You tied the match, we went into overtime, and the kid went ballistic. And I, I called you over to the side and I said, Will, you're fixing to grow up and you're gonna grow up right now. You remember that? Yeah, oh yeah. And uh, that kid came out to you like an absolute crazy man and you absolutely destroyed him. Right there, I, I just knew that uh, you are gonna do something great in sports because you, you had the, I have to win and I'll do whatever it takes. You know, the biggest role model is, is my father. You know, I've looked up to him ever since I came out of the womb, kind of, you know, looked like him, I've acted like him, and, and all the mannerisms possible, and just super blessed to have somebody in my life, like my dad, you know, he's my best friend, so. About eight or 10 years ago, Eddie, um, this is how we have lived, but we actually put it down on paper. So this is the top 10 Taylor life lessons. The number one goal in life is to go to heaven, and number two is to live your life to influence others to do the same. Um, number three, be positive around you, not negative. Number four, plan to succeed. If you don't have a plan to succeed, then you'll automatically have a plan to fail. You take the road less traveled, you be on time. Um, be a winner, not a loser. Success is not an accident. You put in the work and the effort and the work and the effort. Seven, don't be wasteful, don't waste your time or your money. Eight, be a giver. Number nine, exercise your whole life. I mean, you were given, these things were God given to you. And so don't take them for granted. And number 10, you need to marry someone who lives by these top 10. More importantly, um, it just says success is living your life out serving others with your time, money, and God given talents. And I can put each one of your names in here. Life's not about you, it's about other people. And that's why God put each and every one of us on this earth is to serve and love, love others. That's who I am and that's who I try to be every day. All right, this is, uh, this is what we call the field of dreams. This is kind of like our sand lot. You know, you got weeds here, you got dead grass, you got all kinds of different bumps. And, you know, we took a couple in the teeth every now and then, ground balls, but. You could field a ball on this field, you could field a ball anywhere. Yep. And if you could hit BP off him, yeah. you could hit anybody. So Throwing change one ups, finger, cutters, one finger fast ball. Yeah, it doesn't look like much, so we get out here and we, take some chalk and 
put the bases out, cut the grass. But we wouldn't trade memories out here for anything. Growing up, I played four sports. I played them all ever since. From the time I was in sixth grade to the time I graduated high school, I played football, baseball, I wrestled and ran track. Uh, I just really wanted to get the full experience and I did just that. I remember the first time I heard about you, Will. Um, our uh, defensive coordinator came to me and said, do you hear about this kid? He's a sixth grader. And I, I'm like, who are you talking about, Nate? And he says, Will Taylor, the first day you showed up and a, a, a ball eventually ended up in your hands, I knew we have our quarterback. Yeah, big mentor in my life has been Coach Young. Uh, he's been my uh, middle school football coach. He's been my mentor, my life coach, my, my Bible teacher. He gave me the chance to play quarterback in, in middle school, and uh, that was kind of the start of my quarterback career. I've always been the one to uh, play in a baseball game and then right after pack up my bags and go run in a track meet. I've just always been on the go, um, and, and that's what I want to do in college. Well, I'm always open to anything God has in store for me to, to help you with, Will. Uh, you know, what, what you're undergoing is pretty intense. Yeah, and, and the way you've handled it uh, is, is remarkable. You know, my grandfather uh, really gave me the dream and hopes of playing two sports in college. He played football and baseball at the Citadel. Remember this one right here? That's old school, isn't it? That's old school. Check it out, you remember this picture? Uh, I remember that one. Yeah. Yep. Original jersey, you feel that thing. This is my grandfather, we call him Zidi. We're a Lebanese family, that means grandfather. And this is where I get all my athletic ability and, and uh, competitiveness from. We got all these, we got Paul, we got Aaron. Aaron's on the wall, lunch here. Very competitive family, but these two are the best athletes by far. This is where we... Uh, Which two? Y'all too. Me and you. Oh, me and you. Yeah. yeah. You've always told me if you're fast, you're good, but if you're quick, you're great. That's right. Remember when you used to coach us? We were this age right here, wearing them jerseys. Um, he was probably the toughest coach I've ever had. You know, he's always telling us, get on the line, you ain't doing it right. But just, just a winner. Uh, he really gave me the dreams and goals to think big. After my sophomore year of high school, I committed to play baseball at Clemson. And I made it a goal of mine. I wrote down my goals list that year have some interest from the football team as well. I was like, you know, why not? And he really put that hope and belief in me. If he'll continue to do what he's been doing, there's no doubt about it, he's come. He'll always be in the front. I took the boys to Davos Sweeney football camp when you were a... Sophomore. Sophomore. No football offers. Nobody knew your name. I have some video of this. I'm standing there just as a spectator. He lines up at receiver, and the guy in front of you has no shirt on. You know you're a bad dude as a DB. If you come to camp, you don't even wear a shirt. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh, this is not going to go well. Because you're not, you don't even play receiver, really. And 30 minutes later, Dabo Sweeney has his arm around you, drawing up plays, Jeff Scott, Brent Venables. Ended up committing after that year. and. Believe it or not, I was, I was going to Clemson to play, play both sports. I was going to play football and baseball, and um, that's exactly what I wanted to do. You know, making a name for myself is something that I felt like I've always been able to do, and that's just because I'm a competitor. The MLB draft wasn't even on my radar until I was probably a junior in high school. The draft, fun times, stressful times, for all of us, I think we can say, Will and I had a little draft room separate from the main house. I wasn't chasing money. That was the big thing for me. You know, people thought, man, you, you can't miss out on this opportunity. You gotta go, you, you gotta do blah, 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 blah. What do I wanna do? It, it ultimately was my decision. What's gonna be the best experience? What's gonna build me to be the best man I could possibly be one day? 
I was bought into Clemson from then on. You know, it was all Clemson for me, and, and everybody jumped on board too, just to have the family support behind me. And yeah, this is the this is a few minutes after Will and I came out of our draft room. We were all in, and we weren't looking back. I say we because it affects our whole family. You know, the next morning, 6:30 a.m., I was I was at football workouts during the summer, and uh, it was miserable. It was miserable because it was one of the hardest workouts I've ever done. That morning. That morning. <laughs> of all mornings. No but, second thoughts. Uh, there was a few <laughs> second thoughts. The opportunity that was in front of me to play both sports at Clemson was something I couldn't pass up. I've never been a punt returner in my life. Uh, I'm going to take credit for the nickname Maverick, because I call him Maverick. I call him the young Tom Cruise. I uh, used to love when he called me Maverick. Uh, and I think he calls me Maverick just because of the, the confidence. So the Tigers with the first touch. Return the opening kickoff. It was a night game. It was homecoming. And, um, you know, a lot of adrenaline going. I go in the, the fourth play of the game and call a, a jet sweep to the left. I'm lined up on the right. I, I go left and try to cut back. And didn't really think it was anything crazy. So I, I got up and, and limped off the field. And a minute after I got off the field, then I knew something was wrong. But off he comes a little bit banged up. They literally told me on the field. And then from, from that point on, it was it, it's kind of what made my story at Clemson so special. Funny thing is, when I was going through the draft process uh, in high school, they would always ask me, when's the time that, that you face adversity? And when was the time you struggled? And, you know, I would never really have an answer. Yeah, I remember on the Zoom meetings, you would pause. Yeah. You know, I was sitting in that locker room with you, and all these emotions are running through all of our heads, you know. We make the right decision. And Will looks at me right in the eyes and he says, I'm ready to take this on. You know, this is, I have an answer for that challenge, that adversity question. I knew I would face challenges. I just didn't know when they would come. I'm going from, you know, a start and returner one moment and, you know, the next moment I can't walk. It really tested me to be mentally tough, physically tough. Okay, so what? Now what? Like find a way, find a way to win, find a way to get better, find a way to push your teammates. You know, I really had to dig deep. Looking back, just, just kind of very thankful for, for that opportunity to, to grow as a man and find another gear mentally, and physically that I didn't know I had. As you can tell from the media turnout, Clemson baseball is a big deal. It's a big deal. The standing room only aspect of this crowd really speaks to that. Um, and for us to have this special day, and announced Coach Backich as our head coach is, is really, really incredible. Uh, he's coming in, all I know is he's, he's bringing his whole staff from Michigan and we start doing these crazy things during the preseason to, for team bonding and I'm going, God, this dude's crazy. <laughs> and uh, I heard about something. Yeah, we do a bunch of yelling and all this nonsense and I'm like, oh, I don't know. It was unlike any other team I'd ever played for. We started out two and eight in ACC play. Managed to finish 25 and 10. Uh, it was a special year. We rode together Columbia to Cape Cod for the summer to play baseball. And I thought we would talk about it the whole way. Are you gonna play football and baseball this year? You're just gonna focus? It took me months to decide what I was gonna do. Hey, if I give myself a full summer and a full fall, you know, to get my legs back underneath me for the first time and, and, and work on what I need to work on, then, you know, this team could be special. Um, you know, I'm gonna miss football. I mean, obviously having a lot of great relationships and, um, and, and opportunities and experiences. I couldn't play them forever and, and the time is now for me to choose one and no better time than right now. I came to Clemson because I wanted to be at Clemson. Nowadays, it's, it's going all over the place where people are going doing this and this because I want this, but I want to be there. Coach Sweeney has always said, good players win games, good players with good character win championships. Uh, and then they say there's something in these hills and that's exactly right. I mean, there's something special at Clemson and it's, it's because of the coaches bringing in the good people 
before the good players. Uh, I believe that developing the person, the teammate, the future husband, the future father, the future community leader, I don't know if my approach will change in terms of putting the target on developing the total person. You know, if you're gonna hand your son or daughter off to an organization, you want it to be, you'd like for it to be an extension of how you raised your kids. There's a culture and there's a standard at Clemson that I think it'd be hard anywhere in the country to beat. Coach Backage, he's everything. If you gave me a checklist or a wish list, I think Coach Backage has been everything that we could ask for and more. So, how you do anything is how you do everything. And when you break records in the fall, you better believe there's going to be a carryover to the spring. The way he talks to us and the way we do stuff in the classroom and helping us believe in ourselves. My dream is to get Clemson back to the top, win a national championship. I just want to inspire the younger generation. That small kid that has dreams, you can achieve those dreams. You just got to have hard work. Uh, you got to have belief. You got to have toughness. And so I was that, that young kid before with, with big dreams of, of playing football and baseball and, and winning championships. And uh, anything is possible when you put your mind to it. There, there are no shortcuts. Um, you're going to have to do some dirty work. You're going to have to go through a lot of ups and downs. But as long as you stay consistent and find some good in that, then um, you can get there to the top. It's possible. You just got to put your mind to it, and uh, it's possible.